today we're going to be taking a look at the fourth release of the Megabox AMTS vehicle series. This one is called Actaean and it's the first of two releases for the Lunar Exploration set. So something to note, AMTS vehicle sets have traditionally been packaged together in one box and this is the first time they're released separately. We've had land, sea, and air, and this time we're headed to outer space. Who knows what's next for this series, I'm really curious where 5-2 Toys might go from here. Beautiful box art, and around the side is a description of what you could do with it. This one comes with a number of port adapters so you can reconfigure Actaean in a lot of different ways. Here's a reference to Actaean's counterpart, the Shuttlecraft Endymion. These two can combine to form the big robot called Moonwalker. Yeah, so you got the Lunar Rover and the Cube, obviously, and this walker mode in the top half of the robot combiner. Inside the boxes, those adapter pieces with some instructions. You got an instruction booklet, of course, box charger, a catalog, and a box charger insert. There's a new backer insert for this figure. Very much sets the mood for a space exploration set. You know what? I really dig it, and I'm going to keep it right here for the rest of this review. Okay, we're going to take a look at some details on this guy. So like I said, it's a lunar rover, and as would be the case for space exploration, it's a multi-purpose utility vehicle. It's basically a moon version of a pickup truck. It's a personnel carrier with a cockpit on the front. The circular pad has phased array radar written on it, so apparently it doubles as a launch pad and a radar dish. On the bottom we got this really nice gold colored plastic, which I guess is kind of a heat shield. And that's a nod to how a component like this might work in reality. One more detail of a well thought out figure design. There's a nice subtle hexagonal pattern, and you can see some of the mechanics of what's quite a sophisticated piece for a single component. These little extender pieces come out, and they also have a subtle hexagonal impression on them. Very impressive that they crammed this much functionality into a part that's what, 3-5 to five millimeters thick maybe? You've got this mechanical arm with quite a bit of articulation on the back, which doubles as a stability arm for the launch vehicle. The entire launch pad and robotic arm assembly can rotate on a center joint. There are six wheels, nice design, definitely an all-terrain utility vehicle. The back is a payload. These wheels look cool and they do spin, but since they're plastic and probably unsurprising to you, they don't really roll well on smooth surfaces. One of my favorite things about AMTS vehicles is they have cockpits that are totally compatible with another figure series called Dianots, which are these little one-inch action figures. They're sold separately, of course, and they're not cheap at all, but for as tiny as they are, they're a highly posable. You got this roll bar in the front, and I guess this is a heat shield or maybe a display console. You get to use your imagination on that one. Looking more closely at the front, these are footrests, and you can have them standing or in a sitting pose. There's actually enough room for another figure to ride in the back, which is a first for AMTS. C vehicles do have a safety cage on the back, but only room for one in the cockpit. That does come with a slight compromise. There's not quite enough headroom, so you'll have to have the launch pad assembly rotated sideways so he can fit in there. As far as its color scheme, I'm really digging its base white, black, and gray with some orange and French gray accents. Graphic details are tastefully appointed and look great with tons of tiny details. You got caution all the way around, code 7, the AMTS logo, and a circular theme. I'm not really hip on the evil eye graphic on the launch pad. I mean, it's fine, but I would have preferred something futuristic or more appropriate for a high-tech vehicle. Although, when you dig into the thought process behind this figure's design and naming convention, it does make a little more sense. The name Actaean is itself from Greek mythology, and not an especially well-known one. I did a little research to find out where that's coming from. So in some ways, Actaean is thought of as representing the spirit of curiosity, which is totally fitting for a lunar exploration set. And that's actually very clever. Although, the essential story of Actaean is, he saw Artemis in the nude while she was bathing. And as the story goes, she turned him into a deer and he was mauled by his own dogs. So, I mean, Actaean is more or less the Greek mythology version of a peeping tom, which is actually kind of hilarious. So the difference between voyeurism and voyagerism is maybe a gray area. I want to call attention to Actaean's substantially improved build quality compared to some of the past releases. To be clear, there's nothing wrong with older AMTS vehicles. Their materials and components are perfectly fine. This feels next level. That's a little hard to explain until you get it into your hands. The plastic just feels better. Joints are nice and firm. I wish I had the scale to weigh it, but at least in the box mode, it feels a little bit heavier than some of the older versions. Another thing I want to say is after having fiddled around with this figure for a little while, I've come to appreciate what an interesting intersection it is of the different competencies that came together to bring something like this to market. From its design to engineering to whatever requirements it needed to meet a price point to its durability. It's a really sophisticated design with a lot of moving parts, yet it's easy to transform. More recent Beast Box and Mega Boxes have gotten more increasingly complex, and to be truthful, easier to break if you don't know what you're doing. The more complex they get, the less I would describe them as kid-friendly. 
As long as they don't beat the hell out of it, Actaeon is something a kid could absolutely have for years. You got nice artwork on the instructions, of course, same as on the box. As usual, the instructions are pretty easy to follow and tell you just about everything you need to know how to get a figure from one mode to the other. A cool thing about the Lunar Explorer set is you could buy two Actaeons and combine them together, or if you're more of a Rocket Man, get two Endymions. You've got choices, my friend. They show a lot of other cool stuff you can do with it. You got all these different combiner parts, of course. Here's the Endymion Actaeon combiner mode. You've got this thing, I don't know what you call it. A chicken walker mode, which I'll show since it's really easy to do. Complete instructions to get it from lunar rover mode to cube, and vice versa. I'm not going to get too deep into this today, but I wanted to show that Actaeon is partially a parts former, at least for its combiner modes. Given its design requirements, it's likely that they couldn't find a way to make it as versatile as it is without having to remove and reattach limbs. That's not a huge deal, but it does kind of break the believability of a real-world high-tech vehicle that turns into a giant robot a little bit. Everything comes apart real easy, so basically five different sections. One way to think about it when you're transforming it is, it's comprised of five different zones. You've got the launch pad and the arm assembly, both of the leg and roller wheel sections, the cockpit area, and the backside payload. So we'll put things back where they were. For transformation, we'll start with the chicken walker mode. Essentially, you're just forming two legs in the backside platform. Again, they don't give you any instructions for this mode, but it's so drop-dead simple that you really don't need them. You're basically just going to fold up the wheels on the limbs, then you'll separate them from the back. Legs will just rotate down and around, then you'll extend the feet. Then you collapse the back of the knee, and we'll angle the center section up. Here's one part that's a little tricky to me. This piece collapses down to be in the middle of a center section, but for certain modes it has to go up and over this corner, which tends to knock the launch pad assembly out of its connection. Essentially, it needs to be flush with the top of this piece, but you can just reattach it if that happens. We'll rotate that piece up and around. We'll fold this piece down and collapse these two panels to make a platform. We'll get the pilot in his cockpit, and you got yourself a lunar chicken walker. Alright, I'm going to put things back in place. Not completely back to its lunar rover mode, but at least at the starting point we want to be to get it into cube mode. Again, if you think about this as a series of zones, it's a lot easier to visualize how it gets transformed. First thing, you just want to make sure these claws are straight out. If you have these pieces extended out, you'll just collapse them back in. Rotate the launch pad around so the face of Actaeon is facing forward. Then you'll fold the next forward to give clearance. The utility arm's first joint folds up against the base, and then this piece will come up and rest on top of it, like so. The claws are going to wind up being in this position. We'll get it correct when we collapse it down. The entire arm will fold down and it'll tuck underneath the launch pad. The launch pad will be in the right position when it's resting directly on the base of the arm. And the claws need to be right up against Actaeon's face. Then you'll be able to collapse the side panel straight down and that'll form this whole rectangular section. We'll rotate it sideways to make room to put away the cockpit. So we extend the roll bar and saddle parts to get them ready to be folded up. We'll fold the display console straight back. This piece will fold down and underneath in that position. Then the roll bar folds all the way back, and then this piece will sit directly on top of it. For each of the legs, you're just rotating around the back half of the joint, and everything will collapse together. This foot piece will fold directly on top of that in the opposite one. Then it'll fold around and over. There's this connection piece back here, and on the opposite side, and they just clamp together. Same on the opposite side. Fold the foot up and over, slide it back in, rotate it back around, and connect that piece right here so they piece together just like so. You just need to rotate this around 180 degrees. Then you're going to flip these panels up and around on the opposite side here. So we're basically ready to go. The rest of it is just sections that need to fold together logically. The clue is you've got this slot on this one side that will connect with that piece right here. So that's how you know this piece needs to tuck underneath, and then you just snap it into place. And of course you got this groove right here and that slot piece right here. Just pop it in and scrunch it up. The launch pad piece will fold over there. Again, this is where the connection tends to be fiddly. If you need to, you can pull it off so you can extend it down. So what's going to happen for this part of the transformation is this hinge piece needs to be down into that groove. It can't be flush up against it or it won't fit correctly. But there again, parts are easy to take apart and reattach. The whole hinge assembly will fold up and over and collapse up into that. Scrunch it together and you got yourself a nice looking cube. Super cool. I mean, just the fact that it's asymmetrical. There aren't too many boxes that are like this one. It's super sophisticated engineering. Really cleverly done. All the pieces come together really well, of course. I love the way these design elements form some interesting shapes and patterns. And, of course, it fits right into its box charger. Now it's time to give Actaeon a box grade. This is my rating system of 5 points possible in 6 categories for a total score of anything between 0 to 30 points. As always, 5-2 Toys figure designs start with the story of a figure, what it's all about, and draws character traits from its features and cultural references. In this case, they mine Greek mythology for a character that mostly could be identified on the theme of curiosity and exploration. 
Although you can't overlook that that specific character is a peeping Tom. 4 out of 5. Modularity is the key word for Actaeon. Not only is it a multi-purpose outer space utility vehicle with full functionality built into the figure, it can also be reconfigured into dozens of other possible configurations well beyond what it's designed to do. 5 out of 5. In spite of its overall complexity, it's actually really easy to transform into various modes, and it feels solid in all of them. 5 out of 5. Actaeon is highly articulated exactly where it needs to be, and its joints are firm but not stiff, although it's somewhat inhibited from rolling with plastic wheels. 4 out of 5. The plastic joints and overall build quality feel suspiciously similar to the recently released canines. I don't know if that means 5-2 Toys has found ways to improve their engineering, sourced higher quality materials, or are working with a new manufacturing partner. Whatever it is, more of this please. 5 out of 5. This is a figure you can do a lot with, and not only excels for what it is with its intended design, modularity means you can find any number of other configurations that aren't even on paper. 5 out of 5. That brings the box grade total to 28 out of 30. Actaeon is a really well done figure, though I would have preferred the Lunar Explorer vehicles to be released as a set, I totally get why 5-2 Toys most likely opted to ship them individually. By design, they don't need to be paired together, so you do have options. The AMTS series vehicle designs are alone cool enough to get me to buy into this series, but you gotta love all the other cool stuff these figures can do. I'll look forward to talking about prior releases in the coming months, but realistically, my next review is probably gonna be of Endymion. Thanks for taking the time to watch this review. Feel free to shoot me a comment, and likes, shares, and subscriptions are always greatly appreciated. Have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next one.